might be, might contain a grain of historical truth, um, might in any case give people to think about why do they know what they already think they know? How do I know that I know this except that I've always been taught this and never heard anything else? It's always worth establishing first principles. It's always worth saying, what would you do if you met a Flat Earth Society member? Come to think of it, how can I prove the Earth is round? Am I sure about the theory of evolution? I know it's supposed to be true. Here's someone who says there's no such thing. It's all intelligent design. How sure am I of, of my own views? Don't take refuge in the false security of consensus and the feeling that whatever you think, you're bound to be okay because you're in the safely moral majority. One of the proudest moments of my life, that's to say, in the recent past, has been defending the British historian David Irving, who is now in prison in Austria for nothing more than the potential of uttering an unwelcome thought on Austrian soil. He didn't actually say anything in Austria. He wasn't even accused of saying anything. He was accused of perhaps planning to say something that violated an Austrian law that says only one version of the history of the Second World War may be taught in our brave little Tyrolean Republic. The Republic that gave us Kurt Waldheim as Secretary General of the United Nations, a man wanted in several countries for war crimes. You know, the country that gave, that has Jörg Haider, the leader of its own fascist party, in the cabinet that sent David Irving to jail. You know the uh, two things that have uh, made Austria famous, given it its reputation, by any chance? Just while I've got you. I hope there are some Austrians here to be upset by it. <laughs> well, it, it pity if not, but the two great achievements of Austria are to have convinced the world that Hitler was German and Beethoven was Viennese. <laughs> now to this proud record they can add, they have the courage finally to face their past and lock up a British historian who's committed no crime except that of thought and writing. And that's a scandal. And I can't find a seconder usually when I propose this, but I don't care. I don't need a seconder. My own opinion is enough for me, and I claim the right to have it defended against any consensus, any majority, anywhere, any place, any time. And anyone who disagrees with this can pick a number, get online, and kiss my ass. <laughs> now, I don't know how many of you don't feel you're grown up enough to decide this for yourselves and think you need to be protected from David Irving's edition of the Goebbels diaries, for example, out of which I learned more about the Third Reich than I had from studying Hugh Trevor Roper and A.J.B. Taylor combined when I was at Oxford. But for those of you who do, I'd recommend another uh, short course of revision. Um, go again and see not just the film and the play, but read the text of uh, Robert Bolt's wonderful play, Man for All Seasons. Some of you must have seen it. Um, where Sir Thomas More decides that he would rather die uh, than lie or betray his faith. And at one moment, More is arguing with a particularly vicious witch-hunting prosecutor, a servant of the king and a hungry and ambitious man. And More says to this man, um, You'd, uh, you'd break the law to punish the devil, wouldn't you? And the prosecutor, the witch hunter, says, break it. He said, I'd cut down, I'd cut down every law in England if I could do that, if I could capture him. And Moore says, yes, you would, wouldn't you? And then when you'd corner the devil and the devil turned around to meet you, where would you run for protection? All the laws of England having been cut down and flattened, who would protect you then? Bear in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that every time you violate or propose to violate the free speech of someone else, you in potentia, you're making a rod for your own back. Because the other question raised by Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes is simply this. Who's going to decide? To whom do you award the right to decide which speech is harmful? Or who is the harmful speaker? or to determine in advance what are the harmful consequences going to be that we know enough about in advance to prevent. To whom would you give this job? To whom are you going to award the task of being the censor? Isn't it a famous old story that the man who has to read all the pornography in order to decide what's fit to be passed and what is fit not to be is the man most likely to become debauched? Did you hear any speaker? Uh, in the opposition to this motion, eloquent as one of them was. Um